Welcome back to Measure and Mix. Today I've put together a compilation of my top favorite 15 Dollar Tree DIYs that I've done in the last two years on my channel. So I wanted to put this video together in case you guys had missed some of my DIYs. Um, if you've been here from the beginning, you might have seen these before, but if not, they're all here for you guys in one video. All right, let's get started on the video. Okay, to do this project, I just needed a few items from the Dollar Tree. I needed four 5x7 picture frames and four 8x10 picture frames. I already had some paint to paint the frames. And then I also needed some painter's tape, E6000 glue, and some hot glue. All right, let's get started. Here I'm just removing the plastic from the frames and I am taking the glass out so that way it will be easier to paint and I won't get anything all over the glass. Next I got to painting the frames and it took me three coats of paint on the fronts and three coats of paint on the back to cover up all the black. Um, about halfway through the project, I realized it probably would have been a little smarter to use spray paint and spray paint the frames. So just a tip for if you guys want to try this out, definitely use spray paint um, for your project. It'll go a lot quicker. After the paint was dry, I just put the glass pieces back in and secured them. All right, the last step was to attach all the frames together. I started out with the 8x10 frames and made a base out of those. Um, I ended up attaching them with hot glue. I was going to use the E6000 glue and painter's tape to hold it all together, but I was too impatient to wait for it to dry, so uh, the hot glue was quick and easy and it worked. After the base was done, I took the remaining 5x7 picture frames and I attached those to the top to make a roof. These are some items that I already had around the house that I had purchased a while ago from the Dollar Tree, so I decided to make an arrangement for the terrarium. Some flowers sitting in a basket. So I'm going to take this 
um, rope here and hot glue it down and then intertwine it in with each other to make it look like a basket, hopefully. So let's see how this works here. I'm just gonna go ahead, put some hot glue down here.
gonna cut it to the size here and then I'm just going to hot glue it around so that way the flowers won't come out. from the Dollar Tree for this outdoor chandelier is two pieces of fencing and I already cut the spikes off that were on here. You just use scissors or just keep bending them and they'll break off really easily. And then I have a wire wreath form. I have some moss, twine, zip ties, three battery operated tea lights, and three of these candle holders. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by painting the candle holders, this wreath form, and the fence white, and then I'll be back to show you how I put it all together. Okay, so I'm back, and now that I have everything painted white, I'm going to start to assemble the chandelier, and first off, I'm just gonna take the two fence pieces and I'm going to just attach them together and hook them on one side. And then flip it over and hook it on the other side. Okay, so now I want a round shape. So I'm going to take my wire wreath and I'm gonna turn this upside down so that the scalloped edges are on the bottom. And I'm gonna place my wire wreath in here. I'm just going to use some zip ties to secure both pieces together. Alright, so next what I'm going to do is attach some moss to this side of all three of the candle holders and then also the bottom side of the candle holders and then I'm going to attach some moss also to the wire wreath underneath here so I'm going to go ahead and get started doing that So I have the moss on everything now. So what I'm gonna do is I have cut 12 pieces of twine, um, about equal length, all of them are. And I'm gonna take four pieces for each candle holder. And I'm going to tie each piece on the bottom here, like so. And then this is how I'm going to hang these candle holders from the chandelier. All right, now that I have my twine attached to my candle holders, I am going to take all four pieces here and come up underneath this first ring on the wire wreath and underneath the moss and then just tie it off 
and I'm going to tie it in varying heights, all three of the candle holders. So I'll have one medium, one short, and one tall. All right, so I am starting off with some one by two pieces, and I just pre-cut these. I pre-cut them from two one by two boards that I got from Home Depot. They're like around a dollar thirty or something, um, so really inexpensive. And all I'm doing is staining them with my uh, weathered gray and my dark walnut. I just wiped the dark walnut on and then wiped it off. And then I put some of the weathered gray on and then wiped that off and I think this just gives it more of a weathered look and it also is going to match my cabinet um, in my laundry room as well and my shelving so I really like how um, this color works next I'm going to take my six chalkboards and turn them upside down and then lay them out side by side um, in two rows and then I'm going to take my hot glue and glue the seams together now that the chalkboards were all glued together as one piece I flipped it over onto the front side and I took my wood pieces and laid them out on the chalkboard how they were going to go um, I had one at the top, one at the bottom, and then two on the sides to box it in. And then I laid the other pieces on the seams of where the chalkboards meet. Then I took some glue and glued down each piece of wood. The wood on the outside of the chalkboards were half glued on the chalkboards. They weren't all the way glued on the chalkboards, if that makes sense. And then the rest of them were just glued on the chalkboards. Um, and then I just weighted it down uh, with some cans from my pantry. And then I came back two hours later to this, unfortunately. Uh, the wood glue I used was expandable and I didn't realize it. So I had some cleaning up to do. So I just took a knife and scraped around the edges um, and took a little bit of extra chalkboard paint I had to um, touch it up a little bit. Uh, so my recommendation would be to use E6000 or regular wood glue to glue this down and that would work perfectly fine. Then I took my three hooks and I just added one below each chalkboard on the bottom of the sign. Then I just wrote on each chalkboard with some chalk, wash, dry, fold, five cents per load, loose change, and lost socks. And you could write whatever you want on them. I just thought that was cute since it was for my laundry room. And then I used these command strips to hang the chalkboard. And these ones hold up to 16 pounds. So they were perfect for what I need, but you could use like a sawtooth hanger or something else if you wanted to. The last thing I wanted to create for my laundry room was a drying rack. So I'm gonna use four of these metal plant hangers that come from Dollar Tree. You can find them in the spring section this time of year. And I just hung them on my wall with some screws and some wall anchors. And I hung two sets of them 16 inches apart each. Now I'm gonna take these plungers that come from Dollar Tree. I need four of them and I am just going to unscrew the plunger part because all I need are the four wood pieces. And then I went ahead and stained my four wood pieces with stain to match the rest of my laundry room. And then I just placed one of the sticks on the top part of the hanger and then another stick on the bottom part of the hanger. Then I did use some E6000 to put on each side of the bottom hanger so that way the sticks wouldn't roll around. Okay. 
I think this is gonna be so useful in my laundry room. It's perfect for when I'm folding laundry, I can hang things up as I go. And then also if there's things that I don't want to shrink after I get them out of the washer, I can hang them up to dry. I love how this turned out. So for the first DIY, I'm gonna make some wooden candle holders. And for the base of the candle holders and the top, I'm gonna to use these terracotta saucers, which are from Home Depot because Dollar Tree does not sell them, but they're only 97 cents a piece. And then I'm also gonna use these two wooden rolling pins that come from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna be making three of these candle holders in three different sizes. Uh, one of these wooden rolling pins I'm gonna leave whole, and the other one I am just measuring here four inches down, and then I'm gonna cut that with my saw, and then that way I will have three pieces. Now that I have my rolling pins in three different sizes, I have one that I left alone and then the one that I cut with the four inch piece off, I'm gonna put everything together. I'm just gonna take one of the saucers and lay it upside down and then I'm gonna apply some E6000 to the bottom of the rolling pin and then I'm going to place the rolling pin on top of the saucer. Then I'm gonna take a, another saucer and turn that one right side up and place that saucer on top of the rolling pin. Now I just did the same thing for the other two candle holders. Um, the other two candle holders though are just a little bit different because the rolling pin does uh, taper off at the top and the bottom. So when I cut it, there is more of a thicker part um, towards the bottom of each of the rolling pins. And that is what I used as the bottom part of the candle holder and then the smaller part is the top of the candle holder. Next, I am going to paint all three of these candle holders with this Rust-Oleum's Linen White Chalked Paint. I use this for everything. I just gave all three of the candle holders two coats of the white paint and then I let them dry. To give these candlesticks more of a distressed look, I used this gel stain in walnut by Americana, I believe. It came from Amazon. I've had this bottle for like forever. And I just put a tiny, tiny bit onto my foam brush and then I wiped it onto the candlesticks. Um, I used this in place of the cream wax just because I had it on hand. But you could use like the cream, um, dark cream wax that the chalky paint sells um, and that would work too. You could also paint it any color you wanted to. This is how the candlesticks turned out. I think they are perfect for that farmhouse touch. I used three battery operated LED candles from Dollar Tree to place on them. You can decorate them however you would like. And I only spent $8 on making all three of these candle holders and I thought that was a great deal. All right, so for this DIY, I'm gonna be using actually four of these fences from Dollar Tree. I only show three here, but I'm using four of them. And I'm gonna be using them to make um, an arch window. And I am just going to cut the stakes off at the bottom, and then also cut the little um, sides off where the pegs are inserted into, and then the other side where the pegs are um, to connect connect the fences together. They're really easy to cut off. I just use scissors and um, just cut them. And then next what I'm gonna do is just cut the fence in half. So I have two pieces with two arches on each side. Then I'm gonna take one of the pieces and put it towards the bottom of one of the fences on the bottom side and then cut that piece in half. Then I'm going to turn both pieces over and I am going to hot glue the bottom of that fence onto the bottom of the top part of the fence. Um, and it actually stayed pretty well with just hot glue. You just wanna make sure that you don't go too heavy with the hot glue so it doesn't seep out um, onto the other side. And I just glued all four of the parts down to the back of that piece of arched fence. 
Next, I'm just going to take another one of those fences and again, cut the um, stakes off and these little side pieces off and then again, cut the fence in half. And all I'm gonna do is just repeat the same steps by cutting one of the parts of the fence in half and then hot gluing that bottom part to the bottom piece of the fence that I started. And I'm gonna do that with the last piece as well. So that way I will have four sections, three half pieces and then one full piece at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to make one more arched window frame with two more pieces of the fence. Then I'm gonna take my white linen chalk paints and I'm just going to give both of these two coats of white paint to cover up all the black. After I do that, I'm just gonna take my trusty gel stain in walnut that I always use to distress everything. It's really handy. And I'm just gonna put some on a foam piece of brush and I'm gonna kinda go a little heavy on the outer part of the frame and then brush some on the inside to give it a distressed look. Now I wanted to hang a wreath onto the frames. So I had these two wire wreath forms that came from Dollar Tree. They're the smaller ones that come in a pack of two. I purchased these around Christmas time and never ended up using them. So I thought I'd go ahead and use them for this project. And I just took some moss and hot glued it to the wire part on the wreath. And then I trimmed it up. And then I took some twine and just hot glued a piece to the back of the wreath to start off and then I just wrapped the twine um, around the wreath and then hot glued the end um, to the back of the wreath and then I took another piece of twine and just cut that off to make a hanger and looped it around and then just tied it and then I just hung it from the window frames and I think it looks really pretty and um, looks very farmhouse so for this DIY today, I am making a faux shiplap farmhouse clock from one of these foam boards from Dollar Tree and then one of the 10 and a half inch hula hoops also from Dollar Tree. It's the smaller one. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to remove that outer decorative tape they have on there. And there is one spot where it's just wrapped around there. Um, so I just used my box cutter and slid it making sure I didn't slit the actual hula hoop. And then I opened up the hula hoop to take out all of the shaky things that made the noise. Um, and then I went ahead and removed all of the wrapper and put the hula hoop back together. And then now what I'm doing is I am just going to lay the hula hoop on the foam board as close to the edge as possible. It just fits on this foam board. Now there's many ways you could do this. You could cut the foam board in strips and make it um, look like shiplap that way, but I just figured this was the easiest and most simplest way for me to do that since this hula hoop fit on the foam board so nicely. Um, and that is what I'm showing you here. Like these three edges just touch the edge of the foam board. So now what I'm going to do is I am just going to use my hot glue and I am going to hot glue that hula hoop down all the way around. Um, and then I did go inside the hula hoop and reinforce it with some more hot glue because this is going to be the back of the clock so you won't see that. Now I'm just going to use my box cutter and remove the excess foam board around the hula hoop and I'm just using the hula hoop as a guide to make my circle. Next, to make this all one cohesive piece, I just took my linen white chalked paint and spray painted the whole piece um, just to cover up that gray hula hoop. And then I took my level once it was all dry and I came back and that is how I drew my lines for my shiplap. And I just used a Sharpie, um, I used a Sharpie paint pen, but I would definitely recommend a just a regular Sharpie black marker would work fine. And then I came back after after that and just marked where the center of my clock would be and just push my pencil through that to make the hole. 
then to kind of blur out the lines so they weren't um, so distinct I used some of my white linen chalk paint um, that I had in a can and I just brushed lightly brushed over the lines and then after I did that I came back with my um, gel stain in the color walnut and went over those lines and the whole piece to just kind of make it more farmhouse and give it more of a rustic um, feel. So there was no technique to this, I just made sure I tried to use as little paint and stain as possible. Um, and when I did put the stain on, I came back while the white paint was still dry, so it kind of all blended together and it gave those lines a blurry um, look. And then I did come back around the edges where the hula hoop was showing and paint that with some gel stain. Now what I'm going to do is I am just going to to freehand with a pencil um, the Roman numeral numbers I just had my phone sitting out next to me and I just referenced a clock with Roman numeral numbers on it and then um, just freehand where I thought they would be I did start out with the 12 6 3 and 9 and put those in their places um, and then I came back and I filled in the rest of the numbers from there if you didn't want to freehand the numbers, you could always print them out and Mod Podge them to your board, or you could even use popsicle sticks and lay them out like the numbers and then glue those to the board and paint them. So now after I drew out all the letters with a pencil, I came back with my Sharpie paint pen and I just traced the letters in black so they would stand out. Um, I did have a couple issues with my paint pen. So when you are doing this, if you want really skinny lines, don't press down on the um, paint pen too hard because you will have paint that will flood out. And I had that happen just a couple times to me on this and I just came back with my white paint and um, my gel stain and just kind of fixed it that way. So it was easily fixable, but you could use a Sharpie marker in place of the paint pen if you wanted to that would work fine too and you would avoid the problem that I had with the paint pen lastly I picked up one of these clock movement kits from Michaels with a 40% off coupon so it was like around three dollars and it came with the um, hands and the little movement kit here um, so basically I did not know that that gold thing on the top that sticks out of the front of the clock that holds the hands um, came in different sizes so mine kind of sticks out a little bit farther than expected but I don't think think it ruined the piece at all um, but you can get smaller ones so it won't stick out as far but all I did was attach the hands to the clock and this is how it turned out I think it looks really cute and definitely is a farmhouse and has that uh, ship lap feel all right so I'm gonna start out with one of these square containers and then a three pack of these small containers I'm just gonna use one of them and a medium sized planter and then a larger planter from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna put the square planter on the bottom upside down and then take the tiniest planter and place that upside down on top of the square planter and then use some construction adhesive to glue those two pieces together. I already had the construction adhesive from a different project already on hand, so that did not cost me anything, so that was great. And I just put some around the edges and then I wiped the excess off with a wet paper towel. Next, I placed the medium sized planter on top of the smaller planter and I just again used some construction adhesive to glue them together. Next, I had a bag of some rocks from Dollar Tree, so I went ahead and added that to the bottom of this pot just to weight it down a little bit. Lastly, I went ahead and placed some more construction adhesive around the inner rim of the medium sized container and then I placed the large green container inside that medium container and glued those together. 
Next, to give the planter a more cohesive look, I used some glossy black spray paint. It only cost a dollar, and I just gave the whole thing uh, two or three coats of spray paint. I made sure I got the inside inner rim as well in case you could see it um, when you planted the plants. And then when I was done and it was all dry, I came back with some shellac in clear coat that I had out in my garage already, and I just went over that so that way hopefully the paint won't chip in the weather and I think this turned out really good it only cost me four or five dollars to make so definitely under ten dollars this next DIY was inspired by something I saw at LTD commodities and they were barn door mirrors for around $30 for both of them but I thought I could create them for a lot less from Dollar Tree items so I took two of these mirrored picture frames from Dollar Tree um, to create one barn door now you would have to take two more you'd have to double all of these supplies that I'm showing you to create a second one um, so I took those and I removed the mirrors and I painted the frames and then I also painted four skewers um, also with that cream paint that I used in the last DIY uh, and then what I'm doing is I just after everything was dry I put the mirrors back and I am just hot gluing together the two frames so that that way they are hot glued long ways if that makes sense and then I just reinforced it on the back with some popsicle sticks and hot glue now I'm gonna take the skewers and cut those down to size to create an X for each mirror and then I just hot glued those down into place now that the X's were all finished and glued into place, I needed to work on the hinges and the handle to make this look more like a barn door. So for the hinges, I used some popsicle sticks from Dollar Tree and I just cut four equal pieces, two for the top hinge and two for the bottom hinge. And then for the handle, you could buy a handle or use something you already had, but I'm gonna use one of these wooden dowels and a couple of these wooden beads from Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna cut the wooden dowel about in half and then I'm gonna take that smaller piece and cut that in half for to get two equal pieces and then I'm just going to use some sandpaper and sand down the rough edges where I cut off and then I'm gonna take the two smaller pieces and hot glue those to the bottom of the handle and then I just took the two wooden beads and hot glued that to the end of the handle now I'm just gonna go and spray paint everything with this oil rubbed bronze spray paint that I already had. And then after they were dry, I came back and hot glued um, the hinges to the bottom and the top corners of the frames and hot glued the handle down as well. And it was all done and I think it looks beautiful. DIY I'm going to be using three of these Dollar Tree metal buckets with the twine wrapped around them and I am going to be using a drill and a drill bit I just used a drill bit that was as wide as the nautical rope from Dollar Tree and then all I'm gonna do is take one of those buckets and turn it upside down and drill a hole in the bottom all the way through and then I just did that to the other two buckets as well now I'm making this as an indoor hanger for plants, um, but you can make this for outdoor. You would just need to drill some more holes in the bottom of the buckets for drainage. Now what I'm gonna do is take a thing of the nautical rope from Dollar Tree, and I am just going to go to one end and I'm going to make a just regular knot at one end of the rope and just make sure that it is pulled tight. Then I'm gonna take the other end of the rope and I'm gonna feed that through one of 
the buckets all the way through until it gets to the knot. Then I'm gonna tie another knot above that bucket and then feed the other bucket through. And I'm gonna do that again for the last bucket. I actually ended up making my knots a little bit closer to my buckets, so I untied them and redid this at the end of it. Um, but now all I'm gonna do is for the last bucket at the top, I just tied a knot so that that would uh, stay in there and then just cut off the excess nautical rope. Now I just cut a piece of nautical rope for a little hanger and I hot glued that to the top of this bucket and that was it. I love how this turned out. All right, for this last DIY, some of my footage was corrupt from it while I was doing it, so I ended up taking it apart to show you guys how I did it. Um, it's a real simple DIY. It's like one of those racks that you would put in your kitchen to hang plants and uh, towels on. I don't know what you would call it. Um, but what I did was use this plunger and I just used the handle from the plunger. And then I took this Briar Smoke stain by Verithane and I stained the handle in that color. I love this stain and color. I actually saw it on Ashley Lauren's channel and that is why I got it. Um, and then while that was drying, I took one of these hanging planter baskets from Dollar Tree and I just removed the hook from that basket. And all I did to do that was just bend the end where the chains are connected and then just take that hook out. Now Dollar Tree does sell just the chains um, that you can get so you don't have to get the baskets, but I just had these lying around already so I thought I would go ahead and reuse them. And I'm just gonna do that to another one of these chains so they can have two hooks for this project. Next, I'm gonna use one of these Flowers and Gardens tents from Dollar Tree. And you can see on the back of it, I drilled two holes at the top of the ten, just with a drill and drill bit. And now I am just going to take those hooks and I'm going to put those through both of the holes on the tin so that way they can act as a hanger and hang on my bar that I'm making. And then I just close those hooks with my pliers so that they would stay on. Now to hang my bar, I'm gonna be using these universal tool hooks from Dollar Tree, and they come five in a pack with their own screws, and I just screwed two of those hooks to the side of my island, the length of the bar, so that way my bar would fit nicely along there, and then I just hung my decor on there. Now I do wanna say that I just recently saw a video by Julie from Julie Marie's channel and she made something similar um, to this so and she made it all out of Dollar Tree items and I loved what she did so if you guys are looking for something similar but a little bit different using different items check out her channel in that video I'll leave it linked down below but I love how this turned out it works perfect on the side of my island I just added this little uh, piggy um, cutting board and I think it looks great. First DIY, I'm gonna use two of these round mirrors from Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna set one aside and leave it completely assembled. The other one, I'm gonna take and flip over and just pry the back in the mirror out of that. Now I'm gonna use some wooden beads. These colorful ones came from Dollar Tree. They're the larger ones. And I'm gonna go ahead and use those because I have some left. And then the other ones came from Joann's in a pack and I just had them left over. 
so I figured I'd go ahead and use them they are all the same size you can use whatever wooden beads that you have sometimes you can find some at Michaels or Amazon for a lot cheaper than what you can get them at Dollar Tree now I'm just gonna start off by taking one of them and applying some hot glue to the end with one of the ends with the holes and then the other end with the hole is going to be facing upwards and I'm just gonna apply all of these beads all the way around the mirror frame until I get to the end when I did get to the very last bead, it didn't fit perfectly. There was too much of a space between the last two beads. So I just went ahead and removed one of those beads, which it was super easy to take off because it was hot glue. Um, so I just kind of pulled it up and then applied some more hot glue to that bead and moved it over just a little bit. So there was a bigger space in between these two beads, but you could barely tell um, by the end of all of this and I used 34 beads in total to cover this whole frame next I just went ahead and applied some hot glue around the top of all of the beads and then turned my mirror my other mirror over and placed that on top of the beads so that way it made a little tray now I'm just going to take some white linen chalk paint by Rust-Oleum and paint the whole thing with two coats of chalk paint. You could definitely paint this um, before you put it all together, like after you put the beads on the first frame. I just went ahead and did it this way because it was easier for me. Um, and then the next thing I did because I wanted to make it look a little more farmhouse and weathered is I just took some stain that I had on a stencil brush from Dollar Tree and I brushed most of it off and then I just started going around the outer edges of the frame and the beads so that way it looked a little more weathered and worn. Jump into the car on a Friday night I want to drive with you Looking for a bar Now there were a few spots that I was a little heavy handed with the stain so I did come back with my paintbrush with some of that uh, white chalked paint on it and I just kind of brushed most of the paint off so that way I dry brushed around uh, the stain to kind of blend it all together. Now that was it for this little beaded tray. I was inspired by something I saw at Pier 1 and I think this turned out so cute and more affordable. I'm going to use four of the 6x8 canvases and two of the 8x10 canvases. And I'm actually not going to use the canvas, I'm just going to use the frame. So I'm going to remove the canvas just by taking out the staples with a little pry bar. I'm not going to show that part because I've done that in previous videos. They're really easy to take out the staples. And I'm just going to be left with the frames. Now I'm going to go ahead and stain all of the frames with this Briar Smoke Stain by Verithane. I love it. It gives it kind of like a grayish, brownish color. And I'm just going to set these aside and let them dry. Once the frames are all dry, I am going to go ahead and start assembling this. I'm going to make sort of like the terrariums that we used to make with picture frames from Dollar Tree, except I'm going to do it with these wood frames. So all I'm going to do with the four uh, six by eight wood frames is I'm just going to make a box with them. So I'm using hot glue to just glue the frames together. Um, but you could use wood glue or E6000, that way it will be more stable. Um, but I just use hot glue for everything, so it works out for me. So now, once I have my box built, I want to make my little roof. So that's what I'm going to use um, the 8x10s for. So I just take one 8x10 and I am just going to place some hot glue along the back side of the frame as you can see here and then I'm just gonna place the 8x10 frame kind of tilted so that way it gets glued tilted um, so when my two 8x10 frames touch at the top they'll create a peak 
if that makes sense. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and hot glue the peak at the top of the box. So on the two eight by 10 frames, I thought it needed like a little decorative X pattern. So I'm gonna use these skewers that I got in a pack of like, I don't know how many from Dollar Tree so long ago. And I'm just gonna give them a coat of that Briar Smoke stain. Once they're dry, I am just gonna go ahead and place one on the inside of the eight by 10 frame. I just cut off the little pointed part of each skewer. And then I took some hot glue and just hot glued each end of the skewer um, to the inside of the back of the frame so that way you couldn't see it from the front. And I just did that one diagonal one way and then I took the other skewer and did it diagonal the other way and then I did hot glue in the middle where the skewers touch just a little dab of hot glue just to keep it secure and then I just did the same thing on the other side to the other 8x10 frame and that was it I decorated this with some lamb's ear and a little candle and I think it's just really pretty in farmhouse and it has a nice spring touch with the lamb's ear added to it And he said, I wrote you a love song, and I tried to make it beautiful. For the second DIY, I'm going to use four of the 8x10 canvases, but I think the 6x8 or the 5x7s would work in place of the 8x10s. What I'm going to do is just remove the canvas so I am left with four frames. Then I'm going to take two of the frames and remove one of the eight inch pieces off of each frame. So they are held in by these little um, staples or prongs. So I just gently rock it back and forth on each side and the uh, piece of wood comes loose. Then I just took some little pliers and pried out the little prongs on each side side and like I said I did that to two of the the frames then I left the other two frames just as is and normal now I'm gonna take that briar smoke stain and I'm gonna give these all a coat of that stain and let them dry once they are dry I'm ready to put my little ladder together Okay, so the two frames that I opened up and took the eight inch sides off of, those are gonna be the top and the bottom of my ladder. So I'm gonna create the rungs by hot gluing one of those open frames, um, the unopened side to one of the eight by 10 frames on the eight inch side. And then I'm gonna take the other eight by 10 frame and hot glue that to the other frame. And then I'm gonna take the last opened up frame and glue that eight inch side to the last eight by 10 frame so that I have a row of frames that look like a ladder. And then I'm gonna flip it over and use my staple gun to secure the back. Um, you could definitely use wood glue for this and clamp it and then probably also use a staple gun just to make sure it was secure. As you can see here on this first rung, I couldn't get my staples lined up so I had a lot of staples in that one. But then the other two rungs, I only did three staples. So, and then that way it was really secure. So to decorate this ladder, I'm gonna use these three milk jars from Dollar Tree and some of this wire jute twine from Dollar Tree as well. So what I'm gonna do is just take the wire twine and wrap the very top of the milk jar uh, round once with the wire twine and then twist it around so it holds it on itself. And then with the rest of the twine, I'm gonna wrap that over the first rung of the ladder. And then I'm gonna just twist the rest of that twine around itself. Use a little hot glue to secure it down. And then that way it's gonna create a hanger so I can hang my milk glass jar on these rungs. And then I did that with all three milk glass jars and I kind of did them um, opposite of each other. So I hung one on the first rung on one side and then did the middle on the other side and then the bottom on the opposite side. Lastly, I took these lavender florals from Dollar Tree and just placed them in the milk glass jars. And I love how this turned out for spring and you can decorate it for any season, use it all year round. Mm -hmm. And now they're singing their love songs. 
song 